Hello, this is Ryan Riccatelli with ASNews.net, and this is podcast number, or I should say it's webcast number 52, because now we, we do these things live, and I have John Amundsen on the line, who is actually across the world on a little island called Mauritius, which is right off of Madagascar. There's a wave competition that's going on there. And so John has been nice enough to wake up like at 4.30 in the morning to talk with us and give us a heads up on the contest. So uh, why don't you tell everybody uh, hello, John? Hello, everybody. Um, Basically, you know, just a little background on the event. It looks like uh, there's 10 people um, who are, you know, recognized as the best wave kite surfers in the world, and they were invited to Mauritius. Um, to compete in a wave competition sponsored by the Mauritius government, White Sand Tours, Habit Clothing, Ion, DHL, La Sentinelle, um, and the Indian Resort. Um, and the participants include Martin Vari from Argentina, Jaime Jerez um, from Spain, Sky Solback, uh, USA, Bertrand Fleury, French, uh, Grant Baker, South Africa, John Amundsen, who we're talking fr- to uh, from the USA, Peter Peterson from South Africa, Felix Pivik from Australia, Will James from, I don't know, I think the country on here is wrong, but I, I, it says uh, UK, but I believe you, Will's from the USA, so I got my information a little backwards here, and then Jeff Tobias, who's from the US. So anyway, John, um, you got quite a group of people over there. Why don't you tell us what you guys are doing over there? Well, uh, basically, it comes down to riding every day. Um, and uh, really pushing the limits of, of kite surfing. And, uh, you know, every day we're going out uh, when the conditions warrant and, and riding our hardest. And Elliot LeBeau is down here filming uh, every, every minute of it. And so basically at the end of this, uh, uh, of the waiting period for the competition, we review all the comp- uh, competition footage and, basically come up with uh, uh, the three winners. Well, and what have the conditions been like since you've been there? Uh, the conditions have been insane down here. Um, every single day we've had wind. Uh, actually, I take that back. There has been maybe two days of light wind that we haven't gone out. Um, but in on those light wind days, we've been surfing. The surf's been really good. And... Uh, you know, yesterday we went fishing, so there's there's always something to do down here. And and you guys are put up by the Indian Resort, which is a real beautiful resort. Um, and tell everybody a little bit about like what Mauritius looks like and kind of like what the island. You know, give it some of the 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 local local color down there. Well, um, it's it's very similar to Hawaii, uh, where I came from, and you know, I'd say the landscape. The, the water, uh, the, the reef, and the waves, they're, they're very similar to uh, Wahoo or, or most of the Hawaiian Islands. It is out in the middle of the Indian Ocean, and the people are, are mostly Indian down here, which adds a really neat uh, twist to, to the island flavor. For me, uh, when I got off the plane, everything looked like Hawaii. I was like, wow, it's just like Hawaii. I feel really at home. I didn't feel like I I had gone anywhere. When I was on the taxi ride to uh, Lamorne, we were going through little villages, and everybody was Indian, and it was incredible. Like, for me, it was super exciting. All of a sudden, I'm in a different country, and... You know, it it was just uh, a really beautiful thing. Yeah, that thing that kind of took me back. I visited there a couple of years ago, and in, in the Hindu culture is is real prevalent there. Um, and I imagine um, a bunch like you know, obviously ten ten surfers showing up. I imagine it's a little bit of culture shock. It is, but everybody is so friendly. I mean, it's one of the friendliest places I've ever been. Everybody who I've met has a smile, and it's genuine. Um, it's not pretentious at all. Everybody's just genuinely friendly down here. Well, and that's great. And you guys have, like, a group of riders down there. Obviously, there's more than 10 great wave riders in the world. And, and I'm, you know, just to all the naysayers out there who, who've, um, you know, obviously – wondered why they weren't invited to the contest but why don't you give us a little thought and a little um background on how you 
how all these ten people were chosen and how you ended up in Mauritius? Well, I think you're exactly right. There's there's great writers all over the world, and I I don't think that anybody was really overlooked, or maybe maybe they were, but. I think um, there's a bit of history here with some of the riders, um, and you know uh, what what the criteria was to actually pick these riders. I I don't know because I was just lucky enough to get my invitation, so um, I don't know exactly what the criteria was. But uh, the bottom line is what is going to come out of this. I, the video footage that I've been watching is incredible and I think they did pick the right riders um, not to say that there weren't other riders that are as good or even better but um, you know they picked some really good riders to, to really get some incredible uh, footage down here well and you've been surrounded by you know obviously you know Martin Vari, Jaime Jerez, Sky Solbach, Bertrand Fleur. I mean, like obviously that must be a, just a great experience riding with all of those riders: Felix Pivik, Peter Peterson, Will James, Jeff Tobias. Don't want to leave anybody out. Um, but you know, I mean, what's that like? I mean, how's the level? Is the level being pushed down there? I mean, are you just seeing like new things happen, or? Well, um, yeah, that's uh, that's the other thing too. I think everybody has a, a distinct style, and everybody's riding different, and everybody's riding you know, pretty much at a top professional level. And um, I think everybody is able, you know, I, hopefully everybody, I, I know with myself, I'm able to look at everybody's strong points and realize that, hey, these guys have something to offer, you know, something to bring to the table. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm hoping everybody's learning from this event uh, as far as all the professionals that are here with me. Um, and then once all this footage comes out, I think other people will hopefully do the same. Look at, uh, you know, the way everybody was riding and all the different styles and go, wow, okay, uh, that looks neat. I want to do that. Well, you know, we have a live chat room that's going on right now, and there's already a couple questions that I, I'd like to get through. Uh, number one, um, it took you 23 hours to get there. Uh, how, is it worth the travel time? Absolutely. This place... Uh, you know, it it's definitely takes a long time to get to, but on the other hand, like seeing what I've seen in the last three weeks, I know I could plan a trip to, to Mauritius and score. There's no doubt about it. It's it's windy nearly every single day of the year. Um, the this, this surf break is on the tip of the island. It's on the southwest tip of the island, and picks up nearly every little bump out in the Indian Ocean, and so you're almost guaranteed to always have some surf. So, you know, I could spend a little less money and go, you know, somewhere closer and, and spend less time traveling, but in my opinion, I don't think uh, my chances are as good to score as coming here to Mauritius. Well, and I, the last time I, I was there, I, I got to spend 10 days there, and I saw some of the most incredible, you know, waves that I've ever seen. The reef um, is so alive. The color of the water is just – why don't you tell a little, everyone a little bit about how that wave breaks because it is a pretty pretty heavy wave. Sure. Um, well, actually, you know, there are several different waves, so you don't have to – you know, if we're, if we're talking one eye um, – that is a pretty, it's a pretty intense wave, especially when it gets bigger. On the smaller days, it's, you know, most people can handle it. On the bigger days, it, it's very fast, very hollow, and uh, it's very offshore. Um, so it is a very extreme wave as, as far as that goes. Um, like I said, there are other options for, for most people, like there's the flat water lagoon, which is very fun for flat water riding. Um, and there's several little waves either in the lagoon or just out the channel that are, are much easier. And, you know, basically you could start from, you know, a beginner wave rider, you know, up to the, the complete expert rider as far as uh, waves go. Well, and, you know, here's an interesting question that just came out of the lounge. Um, it says, uh, 
how is the judging done with video? Cameras can shoot angles to make a rider look better than they really are doing. I mean, obviously, I know Elliot. He's a very credible guy. I mean, like, what is the angle down there? How are you guys? How who's who's um shoot? I mean, obviously, is Elliot the only one that's shooting this? And then, how are you guys going about shooting this? Sure. Um, we have two, uh, I don't know what you'd call them, they're like perches, like lifeguard perches out on the reef. And so we're, he's basically right in the action. And as far as angles go, um, you know, I, I think I would tend to agree if you were looking at a barrel, if you're looking at it from behind, you could say, okay, maybe he didn't pull in, maybe he did. But the bottom line is whether, you know, the, the video straight on or, or looking down the line, if you're seeing a guy, you know, ripping off the lip, you're, you're watching him ripping off the lip. Yeah, that's true. And all the riders down there are legitimate. And, you know, here's another question. It says, you know, when the comp's going on, are you guys out there with um, other surfers or are they clearing the water and are there any spectators? Um, you know, not, not really. The spectator uh, end of it, most people, you know, it's very difficult for them to see it from shore because it is quite a ways out there. Um, as far as surfers go, there we've been really fortunate, and there hasn't been any surfers out up till this point. Uh, but we all had agreed uh, beforehand that if surfers are anywhere, you know, on the spot, we stay away. So, you know, we would have, you know, basically just shut down the competition for the day or you know, a couple hours or whatever just to let the surfers, uh, you know, have have the spot because, you know, I think we come second, <laughs> in my opinion. You know, and here's another good question. Um, how are the locals receiving the riders in the competition? You know, I mean, obviously there's the infamous white shorts on Mauritius who are, I don't know really what they are, but they're, I guess they're the locals there who really take, you know, their their spot, you know, very seriously. So why don't you give us a little feedback on that? Well, we've been very fortunate to, uh, you know, uh, be here with Patrick DeVu and uh, Laurent uh, LeBoc, and both those guys are, are locals here. So they, uh, you know, they pretty much have, have uh, laid the groundwork for us to be here. Um, you know, I think on a, on a normal basis, everybody's very friendly. Um, you know, here at One Eye, I think there are some other spots, like for surfing, that could be a little bit more touchy. Uh, but as far as it goes here, I think, uh, you know, as long as you have respect for your fellow rider, whether it be a surfer, a windsurfer, uh, kiter, swimmer, whatever, you know, um, I think everything would go just fine for you. And just to address the lounge, you know, the people that are listening live, you know, I think a lot of them don't realize that. You know, all the guys that are on this list, they ride, you know, the premium and premier uh, waves from around the world. They're very used to the surfing crowd, and, you know, they're very respectful. And obviously, John, you live in on Oahu, and, I mean, if, if there's any more hardcore of a surf scene than that, you know, you let me know. But, I mean, <laughs> obviously, John takes care of his business in, in Oahu, and, and uh, I'm sure that they're obviously respecting the locals. Now, there's a rumor that some there's a couple locals um, in, 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 that are in the event. Are those the locals that you just named? Yes, they are. And those guys are incredible. And I think all the riders here, all the international riders, agree that these guys are on a top professional level. Um, you know, they may not have had the uh, coverage as, as most of the guys that I'm, I'm here with, but, you know, these guys are incredible. And, uh, you know, we were just watching some video footage the other night, <laughs> and uh, Twiggy, uh, the, one of the South Africans, he, he, he commented, he goes, you know what, I think uh, Laurent won the competition this, <laughs> on this day. So, you know, that right there says a lot. Well, and there's a there's people chiming in in the lounge, and and I don't know if any of this is factual, but I'm just going to channel the questions. But it says rumor has it that Bertrand was a little freaked out by the offshore conditions in the beginning, um, and it, you know what happened there. And then also, is there a rescue boat there? Yes. Well, I think everybody had uh, had their uh, doubts about the wind being so offshore. Um, I know for a fact, you know, uh, myself. 
and you know some of the other riders we all kind of thought oh man it's you know we're not going to be able to do this and um you know we were a bit unsure but when it came down to it i think every rider stepped up to the plate and and figured it out um you know will and and felix got here a week earlier than most riders they were able to you know give it a little bit more time but you know i think when most riders, you know, started performing in the competition, it was pretty much game on. So um, I think everybody being professional adapted and, uh, you know, made it happen. Um, and as far as a rescue boat, we do have uh, the Mauritian Coast Guard. So offshore, we ha- usually have uh, uh, up to two boats out there in case we do lose stuff, which has happened. I mean, we've destroyed <laughs> multiple kites and uh, lost multiple kites, and uh, those guys are pretty much right on top of it. You know, they're out there, you know, getting the kites, getting the riders, and uh, making sure everything runs safe. Well, and here's an interesting, like, it's like insider information, I guess it's about you. It says John got fully yard sales last Wednesday when he pulled into a, a late uh, backhand closeout, and it says you ripped your kite in half and just got mashed. Uh, huh. Talk about that and what happened. Well, actually, that was probably the actually it was the barrel of my life. Um, and the ironic thing is, we we had a photo shoot, uh, a helicopter photo shoot uh, at 11 a.m. in the morning. We. Uh, I rigged up about 15 minutes beforehand just to get out there and get a few waves under my belt before they showed up. And, you know, I rounded the reef, went into the break, and and a very solid set came through. And I took off, and the opportunity was there to pull in. And I just, you know, I let it have it. And I didn't really consider the consequences. I mean, you know, looking back on it, it might have been – a little wiser to uh, to not pull in and survive, you know, for the helicopter and, and the photographer. But, you know, the reason I came down here was just for that. I mean, to pull in the, a big barrel and, you know, to push my personal limits. And at, at that moment, I, you know, my instincts took over and, uh, yeah, just pulled into a big barrel and uh, got closed out lost my kite, well, actually blew my kite up and then lost it and then, you know, got hammered by the rest of the set um, and eventually swam in. <laughs> the the person in the lounge wanted, they said that the, there was a cleanup set, I guess, behind it that took you out and they wanted to know about that too. What was that like? Well, uh, you know, I mean, fortunately I have a, a good solid background in, in big waves uh, on Oahu, on the North Shore, and you know, it, it prepared me on one hand when I looked at it, I go, okay, you know, I can I can get under this. But when I did go under, I mean, I was pretty much on the bottom. And usually I have a little bit of room to, you know, escape under under the wave. But in this case, I was right on the bottom and, and the thing just barreled on top of me and peeled me up off the reef and just, you know, sent me into a... a you know, uh, a spin cycle, and it was quite a quite a beating and hold down. <laughs> well, no good. Well, what? How does that compare to like a Hawaii beat, a Hawaiian beat down? Um, it's it's very similar. Like I'd say, if I was surfing, I I I've been beat down like that before. With kiting, I'm not so sure I have because most of the spots that I deal with are are not that hollow. Like this place, some of the sections are like pipe pipeline and uh you know that's pretty rare in kiteboarding because usually in kiteboarding we're dealing with uh either side shore wind or or side on or on uh you know or maybe even side off but still the wave isn't as hollow as this i mean the way wind seems to you know i mean if you looked at the wave you'd think that it's blowing straight offshore but it's just side shore enough to actually ride it with a kite so um, it makes the waves really hollow and, uh, you know, create quite a, a beat down. 
Well, and here's a real interesting question that just came out of the lounge. It's asking about what kites are working better, and obviously this is great because we have like probably bow kites and sea kites, and you know what's going on down there. Well, it's a it's a I'd say a fifty fifty mixture. I'm riding uh, my North Rebels, and I love them. I mean, it's it's about the best kite I've ever flown in these kind of conditions. Um, you know, I have all that D power which allows me to, to get back into the wave, you know, after, a, like, say, I, I do an off the lip, I can depower the thing and just drop right back in, no problem. Um, you know, but like I said, there are, I'd say, a, it's probably a 50-50 combination. There, there's uh, 50% on sea kites and, you know, 50% on, on uh, flat kites. I mean, are, is there strapless riders versus strapped riders? How's that controversy, and how is that, like, working out uh, in terms of the contest? Well, I think overall it's it's been okay. There's been, you know, a, a few riders kind of bringing up the points, and, you know, like, uh, it, it's been a little bit of an issue, but not too bad. Um, I think in the end, like I said, I think every rider's able to look at all the – styles and realize, hey, it's legitimate, um, you know, and I think that will be the best thing to help the, the, the sport grow is having that open mind and realizing it all does work because in the end, it's all going to come, you know, it's basically going to uh, all come out however it comes out, you know. Um, you know, I remember when I started kiting, there was, there was a lot of strong opinions about uh, this style or that style or, you know, uh, two lines or, or four lines. But really, in the end, it all seemed to work itself out. And I feel the same about, you know, unhooked and hooked and strapped and strapless and, you know, backside and frontside. I mean, it, it, it'll all work itself out. If it's not legitimate, then it'll be left behind. But if it is, you know, in the end, you know, I don't think we're going to be the ones who, who dictate what is or isn't legitimate. Uh, you know, I think everybody can decide for themselves and uh, and ride the way they want to ride. I, I agree with that, and, and I guess that's what I want to put you, and this is, I, I want to put you on the spot a little bit. Um, what's, what's John Amundsen's idea of legitimate, and like, because everybody always talks about this legitimate, that's legit, that's not legit, he's on straps, he's not, he's riding on hook. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, those are real small little you know differences subtle differences and i know that you know obviously riding strapless and unhooked is i mean it's really it's a different style of riding but i mean what is what is this whole controversy about legitimacy well you know i think it's just like i said you know it's it's just all opinions um and and my opinion on it is i i would love to do every single aspect i'd like to experience every aspect and which I've done, I think. I mean, for myself personally, I've tried all the different styles, and I just come up with my own style that fits me best. And you know, but that's not to say that uh, any of the other styles aren't legitimate. It's just what what makes me happy, you know. And for me, I, I just want to tr- stay true to my myself and you know and my fun, you know, because in the end, I do this for me. I don't do it for anybody else. You know, I don't do it for cameras. I don't do it for, um, you know, other riders to like me. Um, you know, I want to have fun in the sport. And, you know, if they want to come along, that's great. But, you know, the bottom line is is every rider needs to, uh, you know, fulfill themselves. And however they, they uh, feel they need to do that, you know, so be it. Hey, John, I, I, I'm sorry to put you on the spot like that, and I agree with you because that's what I tell my friends who, who you know, I fly I fly bow kites now, and, and I think my best move is that I like to jump high and wiggle. Um, you know, I, I just like to have fun out there, and, and, you know, I like, and I think that that's probably the most important point that I wanted to make. It's like they have all these differences in, in what they observe as, you know, legitimate, but at the end of the day, I think you hit the nail on the head. It's all about having fun and, and doing what makes you happy, and so, I, you know, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of really talented riders out there. Um, you know, I, I, every one of these names is, you have a couple world champions, and I mean, it's just, it, it, obviously, there's going to be 
personalities and differences of opinion. And um, the one thing that, you know, has come out of the lounge, it says, you know, why has there been so little information coming out about this comp? There's been a few photos, but there's really been nothing about this contest. Good question. Um, I, I didn't organize it. Um, like I said, I, I was lucky enough to get an invitation. Uh, you know, I don't know exactly why there hasn't been a lot of uh, media exposure around it, but you know, I know for a fact right now, um, Stefan, our, our uh, photographer, and Elliot, they're compiling some of the best photos and uh, and video that I've I've ever seen. And you know, I think all the riders and all the people who have actually checked out this video would agree that it's definitely. Uh, a level above anything we've ever seen. So um, I'm hoping at this point now there will be uh, a lot of that getting out there and a lot of information about it. Um, but back to your question, I'm not sure exactly why there was not like you know a lot of uh, of uh, promotion in the beginning. Um, you know, it could be the fact that um, you know one eye is a small wave. And they didn't want to have to, you know, say, hey, you know, you guys can't ride here. Um, so I think maybe if we would have um, come out in the beginning and said, hey, this competition will be here, um, there's really no use to that because, you know, from a spec, like I said earlier, spectator's point of view, it's, it's so far out there you can't really see it. So what's the alternative? Maybe to go ride it, <laughs> you know. So, you know, with, with ten, uh, 10 riders out there already, uh, you know, and then, you know, some visitors that, that maybe either want to watch or participate uh, might overcrowd the spot for sure. You know, that's true. And I know that um, obviously when, when I went down to Mauritius, um, I mean, it was very, they were hesitant to for us to print the story out of Mauritius. So I imagine that's probably played into it too. Um, but here's a good question. You know, has any one rider um, – gotten what is universally agreed upon by the participants as the best wave and ride and it says for instance the press release stated that martin is getting the most barrels of any rider and that will experience three consecutive barrels on one wave so with that said you know um is there anybody that's really just like on top or you know uh as far as overall performance goes yeah like has anyone gotten like the best Um, wave of the event you know, it's very difficult to judge. Um, I was actually talking to a friend of mine back in Hawaii, and, and he asked me, he said, who stands out in your mind? And I, it was funny because I didn't really think about it up until that point. Um, but everybody is bringing something to the table, and everybody's a standout in their own way. Um, so for me, it was really difficult to answer that question. Um you know, I, I have to say Felix is killing it uh, with with his top turns. He's, he has a really beautiful style and, and top turn. Um, you know, Will has, you know, he's riding front side, back side, hooked and unhooked. You know, to me that's incredible. Um, uh, Twiggy Baker, he's, you know, he was the man on the big days. You know, he was really catching, you know, big waves. Uh, Pete Peterson... You know, he's he's ripping as well. You know, he has some really beautiful turns. Um, so, you know, Martin, he's, he's been pulling into big barrels. And Bertrand, like, everybody just has something that they're bringing to the table. So, um, you know, I think, I think everybody's a winner at, at this event, personally. Is everybody getting along and is everybody hanging out? And, I mean, how's that vibe going? Is, has it brought, like, all of you guys, like, closer as like charging down this path because of of you know a wave event a legitimate wave event and i mean do you see that this is like going to be the catalyst to more events or well yes i do um i i think i think generally everybody's been getting along really well there's been a few instances where um you know there's been a little bit of a debate here and there but um you know i think everybody got over it real quick um, but I, I would say the general feel, everybody's getting along great, and, uh, you know, there is a bond between all the riders. So, you know, I, I think the morale's been really good here, and I think because of our 
relaxed format, it's it's created, uh, you know, uh, a, uh, like basically a, a friendly atmosphere. So, um, you know, I, I it, and it's really allowed, I think, all the riders to, to talk about our sport and where it might be going and and what we can do to actually uh, further the sport. Well, someone's chiming in and saying that uh, um, they heard from someone over there that everyone has kind of like gotten really excited about, you know, revitalizing a competition back in North America at Waddell. Um, Why don't you give us a little heads up on that? Well, yeah. um, The other day we we were actually all sitting, uh, sitting down for lunch and we started talking about maybe doing some sort of tour. Um, and Waddell definitely was up there on the list. And, you know, I, like every sport needs to grow. And at a certain point, I think competition is part of that growth, is, is definitely a stepping stone for that growth. And, uh, you know, there was talk about, you know, putting together some sort of wave tour. You know, I want to I want to step back and you know someone talked about Will getting three consecutive barrels on one wave. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. That's that's exciting in my mind. Yeah, well, definitely. Um, you know, like I said, Will's an incredible rider, um, and I th- I think I know which uh, which wave you're talking about. Uh, but yeah, he definitely got barreled a few times on the wave. Um, and, you know, we're seeing a lot of that down here. Uh, you know, I, I think Martin definitely wins the title as far as <laughs> most barrels pulled into. I mean, he's been the man, like, pulling in deep and, uh, you know, getting some really good barrels. Um, but, you know, I think every rider has been pushing themselves to, you know, to pull in, uh, you know. And so it's it's been an incredible event for for barrel riding, for sure. Now, you know, we we're, we talked a little bit about kites. Let's talk a little bit about boards. And why don't you tell us what the different types of boards people are riding down there and what's seeming to work? Well, um, you know, like I, I'm fortunate enough to have several of the riders on, on my custom designs um, that I, I designed specifically for one eye. Um, and... You know, I'd say pretty much all the riders are riding, you know, what they normally do uh, when they're at home, and everybody seems to be making it work, but um, there definitely is a point where, you know, this place demands something specific, Um, and, like, I was fortunate enough to get my feedback from, from Patrick and Laurent and some of the other boys that I designed for down here. Um, and and incorporate those in the boards that I brought for myself. And, you know, for me, I feel like it was really a benefit to do so. And, you know, riding these waves, it's a very critical piece of equipment. Uh, You know, this is one place in the world that you don't want any weak points in your equipment, whether it be kites, lines, uh, or board or harness, anything. Uh, you know, the first one of the first days I went out, I I picked up one of my old bars. I go, ah, this thing, you know, this thing will work. I went out, and within a half hour, I broke a line, and you know, my kite was flying out to sea. So, uh, you know, like I said, you just don't want any weak points in your equipment, and and the boards being obviously a huge uh, part of your equipment. Uh, so, you know, I think all the guys that that came down were were very confident with the boards uh, and the designs they were bringing. Well, and I know that that's a tough question because it's, again, you bring up the controversy of what's legit, what's not legit, and opinions and all that. But, um, you know, here's a good question. It's just a side note. Um, Was there any waiting period for this contest while you were there? Uh, Waiting period, yes. It was basically from uh, September 20th to... October 10th, so we're still we still have a few days in the waiting period. Uh, we do have another swell coming on Sunday, so you know hopefully we'll we'll get the conditions where we can 
you know, it'll probably be our last day of, of competition. So, yeah, that was the waiting period. Now, is everything happening at One Eye? Yes, every every uh, wave ridden in this competition will be at One Eye. And here's another question, you know, what kind of customizations are people, like, doing for their boards to, to handle, like, the surf down there? Like, what are some of the things that even you're doing to your personal boards to make sure that they're working right in these big waves? Yeah, well, I, I really couldn't speak for, for any of the other riders or designers, um, but with my personal boards and the, and the boards I designed for some of the guys here um, are generally a little bit narrower. Uh, they have a little bit of a gunnier look to them, uh, and I've, I've modified the rockers to work, work on this wave. Uh, and like I said, it's mainly been from feed, feedback from uh, Patrick and Laurent and the guys down here. And, you know, I'm just basically uh, giving it a, a bit more rocker, and, uh, you know, especially in the tail. And this seems to work really good on this wave. Uh, so like I said, you know, for myself, that's, that's what I've done. And as far as the other riders, I, I couldn't really comment on it. No problem. I understand. That's a that's a touchy issue, man. Um, and then, obviously, are there any riders that are just riding plain surfboards? Um, you know, I think all the the competitors have a kite specific board. Um, I do know Felix. He has been riding uh, a surf tech, and that uh, you know started out originally as a surfboard, and he put inserts in, and uh, that's what he's been riding. Um, but as far as the other riders, I, I'm almost positive all the other riders have, you know, a surf, a kite surf specific board. Well, and obviously when it's all done at the end of the day, is, is there a nightlife there? Is there any parties for you guys? Or are you guys just pretty much just beat and just go to sleep and wake up and live another dream day? Well, I'd say, yeah, most of the time we've, we've, uh, been pretty tired after the day the day's done and then uh going to bed but there has been a few really good parties every night here at the hotel they have live music and uh you know there's there's something going on what has this contest done for kite surfing and you know like being uh, really a, a wave dedicated event well you know like i said in the end i think um you know, the riders that, that came together will all have a, a certain respect for each style of riding <laughs> because really, in the end, it, it's all good. You know, it all works. Um, so hopefully, you know, all these guys will go away uh, with a better knowledge of what's possible in the future. Um, and, you know, and and unfortunately or i guess fortunately sometimes but unfortunately um you know us guys in the media can have a big influence on uh just average riders everyday riders and you know if if the information that we're giving is is good then it's a good thing but if it's you know maybe not for the average rider it could be a bad thing so you know um you know, it, it would be good if we could all leave here with a broader uh, opinion on each style of riding and, you know, be able to present everything out there, not just the most, the hardest and most technical thing, uh, you know, a rider can do, uh, because that may not be the best thing for the average rider. So, you know, I, I just hope everybody leaves from this learning something. Um, and then, like I said, the dialogue about uh, maybe doing a wave tour. You know, I think we, you know, this competition allowed us to all get together and talk and, you know, uh, talk about things like this wave tour. And maybe in the future uh, we can bring this together and, uh, you know, further, further the sport. Well, and here comes an interesting question out of the lounge. Um, can the average or beginner wave rider have fun in Mauritius? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, one eye, like I said, is a, a very extreme wave. There are 
several other little waves from, you know, like a beginner wave rider, some, something a beginner wave rider could ride and have a really good time. And then they could actually progress up to one eye if they wanted to. I mean, if that's where they wanted to go, they could progress up to that. But I think there's everything in between. There's, there's the beginner wave on the inside of the lagoon. Um, just outside the channel, there's a wave that, you know, is, is doable for most people. Um, and then there's one eye. So, um, you know, I think there's something for everybody at, at one eye or at Lamorne. And, you know, here's another question, too. Everybody's really interested about checking out this footage and seeing more about it. And, I mean, even myself, I saw the press releases, and that's what I was like, man, we got to do an interview with these guys. we got to channel their channel what you guys are doing out to the world because I think it's just really cool and I think it's really good for the sport. But, you know, Elliot LeBeau of ACL Production is down there. He's shooting video, and, you know, he's the guy that's in charge of obviously getting all the footage together. What are you guys going to do with this footage, and where will my – listeners are, be able to you know find more information and actually get, a, get well their hands um up. with the with the video footage uh elliot will be making a, a video uh the the release date and the name i'm i don't know um but he will be working on something and uh you know it'll be a compilation it won't be just mauritius stuff but he you know he's been traveling around the world uh, to some of the best wave riding spots, and you know, I have a feeling this will be a really, really good movie. Um, and Stefan, he he will be dis, uh, distributing the the uh, still footage to uh, all the major magazines. So, um, you know, it, the the stuff will definitely be out there uh, in the short future. Well, and the good thing about this this podcast, our webcast, is that I mean, our listening audience extends around the world. I get emails on a daily basis from people um, just trying to tell me how far that that our our voice reaches, and so it's really exciting for not only me but for the sport of kiteboarding uh, to be able to channel you. Um, obviously, your voice being down on an island in in right off of Africa, and um, I mean by tomorrow, I mean you're gonna you. There's going to be people driving to work in L.A., San Francisco, New York, people flying to Hong Kong who are downloading this on their iPods and listening to us talk. So um, it's kind of – it's almost surreal at times to, to, to see the impact that this little interview will have. Um, but, you know, people get very excited about this, and this is a, a, a great opportunity, obviously, for you, um, you know, just to um, be the voice of – you know, what's going down in Mauritius, and not only that, but the evolution of kite surfing in the waves. Um, you know, and I, I agree, you know, I mean, technology is insane, and, and you and, you know, your your colleagues have done such a good job with things like this podcast, and I think it's really important, uh, and it's a great way to bring everybody together. It's kind of like this competition, you know, we have all these great riders coming together in one spot physically, um, you know, we can't do that with, with everybody, you know, out, out there, you know, physically, but, you know, we can, you know, with, with your podcast, I think it's an incredible instrument to, uh, bring everybody together, you know, and, um, you know, and by these people asking me questions, I mean, we're basically hanging out and talking, you know, so, uh, great job. No, and I, I really appreciate you getting up in the middle. I mean, you're you're living in tomorrow at like five, it's probably like five thirty in the morning over there. So, um, I mean, what are you going to do today, or what's your day like? What's your day looking like? Well, today I will wake up, and I'm going to bang on my neighbor's door, Jaime, and uh, I'm going to wake him up, go get breakfast, and then we're going to do something fun, whether it be uh, you know just going for a swim, playing volleyball, or uh, you know, if, if the wind comes up, we're going to go kite. So uh, <laughs> that's about it. Just go have fun. Hey, what do you think of that buffet at the at the Indian Resort there? I think it's really good. They've done a really good job in, uh, you know, breaking it up. Every night's a, a different theme. Uh, last night was French. I think the night before was Asian. And, you know, so they always have something new. And, and it's good quality food. You know, the, the cooks here are very, very good. Um so, yeah, I mean, it's been a really, it's actually been a dream trip, and I think most of the guys here feel the same way. I mean, it just doesn't get any better, and I, I, I'm i really fortunate for the opportunity to come down here and uh, 
you know, I thank everybody for, for bringing me down. So, Well, right on. We're going to let you get back to sleep and uh, try and, you know, get a couple hours of rest. And, um, and probably by the time that you wake up, we'll have the show produced and um, it'll start pinging around the world. And um, hopefully we'll light up the forums and with a bunch of feedback. And, um, again, like I said, thank you very much for coming on the show. Why don't you um, throw some shouts out to the sponsors and whoever needs to be, um, you know, <laughs> given some credit. Okay, I'd love to. Um, you know, I'd first like to thank Patrick and Laurent uh, of Habit Clothing and, and the Kite Company. Those guys are unbelievable. I mean, not only are they great riders, great people, um, they're just they're great hosts, you know. Um, and I thank them for bringing us all down here and, and getting us all together. Um, our, our event sponsors, the uh, Mauritian Tourism Promotion Authority, like to thank them, uh, White Sand Tours, Habit Clothing, ION, DHL, and uh, the Indian Resorts. And, you know, obviously all my sponsors, uh, or <laughs> my sponsor, North Kiteboarding, and, uh, you know, just I'd like to say hi and, you know, uh, to all my friends in, in Hawaii. Well, that's awesome, John, and um, like I said, again, thank you very much, and um, if, if anybody has any questions or, I mean, where do we point people to go for this, the contact for this contest? Questions. To, Good questions. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if anything, you guys, anybody that's out there, you can channel questions to us. We'll make sure they get to the right people, and... Um, Hey, have a good time. Come come back in one piece and um, tell all the boys down there I said hello. Right on. Thank you very much, Ryan, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, John. Have a nice have a nice sleep. Right on. All right, see you, brother. Bye. All right. Well, that concludes podcast number fifty-two. We had a little bit of technical difficulties with just uh, going across the world. Um, I just want to thank uh, LostCherry.com. Uh, LostCherry.com is uh, obviously a it's a website where there's a lot of kiteboarders on there. Um, if you're not into the whole uh, MySpace singles aspect of it, you don't have to be. Um, there's a ton of kiteboarders on there. Um, all of us actually right now are sitting in the kiteboarder lounge, which is a chat room that we have a live player um, where we broadcast this interview. So um, for any of you who want to channel questions, um, you guys can come in here. You can participate um, via the live version. Or, um, you know, all of our staff, Marina Chang, Paul Lang, um, they're on the forums. Um, they uh, that We put the topic out there that we're going to discuss. And, and anyone anonymous or whoever, you can ask any question you want as long as it's above the belt. And um, we'll channel it to uh, the, the, the guest speaker. And next week we have Peter Tro, uh, which will be a real interesting interview. Uh, Peter Tro is a wave riding just pioneer. And um, he's, uh, he's sponsored by FlexiFoil, so he'll be talking about all the FlexiFoil gear. So that should be a really great uh, webcast. And, again, like I said, I just want to throw a, a shout-out to everybody who joined us in the lounge. I uh, really appreciate your feedback. It, it helps the, the flow of the interview, and um, I get sometimes, like, tied up, tongue-tied. I don't know what to ask um, some of these guys at times, so I really love and enjoy, uh, um, you know, ch channeling your questions. And anybody who just thinks that, you know, maybe, hey, I'm, I'm a little bit too shy to, to ask a question, you know, who cares? Sign up on KiteForum.com, NW Kites, any of the forums out there. Um, sign up and, and, and you can be anonymous and ask any question you want to ask um, that's our goal we want to channel it straight to the, the panel guest and, and you know really get your questions answered and um, real quickly I want to address last week's podcast or webcast um, with Bob Wendler and Win Wing um, and obviously there was a real outcry on the forums which you know was to be expected it's a very um, a touchy subject where there's a lot of opinions and um, Bill Hansen obviously um, wrote a very, um, very articulate email and addressed his concerns on the forums. And, um, you know, Bill, is, we've invited him on the show, and um, unfortunately he declined at the moment. Uh, he didn't want to antagonize any more drama, um, you know, due to the win-wing. Um, and I respect that completely. And, um, again, you know, our webcasts are designed to... Uh, go straight to the source without the marketing hype and you know sometimes it's going to rub people raw and you know unfortunately that's what makes the world go round but there was no malice in in our last interview we were uh, just literally doing what we do with every manufacturer if, whether it be Nash, North, Slingshot, Liquid Force, uh, Caution Kites I mean 
we've had everybody on here and everybody has a chance to uh, be very candid about their product. So uh, to Bill Hansen, um, I just wanted to throw that out to you. Um, thank you for listening and thank you for your feedback. And we would really like to get you on the show and hear your voice. So um, again, to all the listeners out there, thank you very much for all the support and positive words. Um, at times when I've thought that this was just, um, you know, <laughs> me being the idiot on the mic, um, you've really um, given me, you know, focus and helped me you know, build the show to where it is. Marina Chang, Paul Lang, and everyone who helps make this um, this show happen. Nikki Ivanovsky, um, she's basically my girlfriend and helps blog this thing out to the world as well. So, anyway, um, I'll get off the mic. And um, again, thank you for tuning in. And I apologize for the technical uh, difficulties we had, but I think this will conclude a really good podcast. And I look forward to next week. Thank you very much, and have a nice night. Yeah, well, no, yeah, yeah. I know, yeah.